Buffy's Big Cat Door, written and illustrated by Laurie Campbell, adapted for audio by Laurie Campbell. Buffy is a little kitten. His fur is soft, blue, smoky gray. He lives in a big farmhouse with Hoot, his mother. Buffy is full of energy and loves to play. Buffy does not look like his mother Hoot. She is a gray tortoise shell cat with pale green eyes. Her eyes are large like those of an owl and glow like the moon at night. She is shy and prefers the night time when she can be alone to hunt. Hoot is glad that Buffy has plenty of toys to keep him busy. Playing with him is tiring and Hoot would rather be outside. All day long there is a tinkle of bells and a thump of stuffed mice as Buffy bats them against the walls with his paws. He has so much energy that he's bouncing off the walls. He can jump from the red sofa onto the green cupboard and leap into the air and hang from the light fixture swinging back and forth like Tarzan. His mistress, Margaret, cries, Enough! Go outside and play. And she scoots Buffy outside through the cat door. Buffy, living indoor, has never experienced the outside world. The wet grass feels soft under his paws. His nose twitches at the sweet smell of clover. Underneath the lilac bushes, Silky and her three tiny fluffy chicks peek from the undergrowth. Buffy reaches out his paw to play. He quickly draws it back when the mother hen attacks him with her wings and sharp beak. The hen sees Buffy as a threat to her chicks. Buffy runs away. Three white crowned sparrows perched on a cedar hedge fly away. They also see him as a threat. The blue jays drop acorns on his head. They call out, silly cat, silly cat, go back inside where you belong. The black squirrels, sitting in a nearby tree, scamper to the higher branches. Buffy climbs up the tree, trying to reach them. He loses his balance and falls onto the ground with a thud. A little red squirrel, sitting on the edge of the bird bath, tells him, if you want to climb a tree, you have to flatten your body against the tree. Then raise your bum up and push yourself up the tree. Buffy says, thanks for the help. Then he says, my name is Buffy. I would like to know, why you, are you so nice to me? The red squirrel answers, I, I just moved here and I'm the only red squirrel. I know what it feels like to be new. I'm Squeak. My mama calls me squeak because that's the noise I make when I get excited. Buffy is excited to have a new friend. He asks Squeak to come to his house to play with his toys. Squeak is happy to come. He has never been inside the house. Margaret catches the two trying to sneak into the house through the cat door. She shoes them outside with her broom. Squeak lets out a series of sharp squeaks and scurries up an oak tree. Buffy is left alone again without a friend. Buffy sees what he thinks is a black and white cat. Buffy says, hello, my name is Buffy. Would you like to play with me? Buffy catches a skunk by surprise. Startled, the skunk jumps. There is a strong odor. Forgetting his manners, Buffy asks, what is that smell? The skunk replies, I'm sorry, but whenever I am surprised, I make a bad smell. That's why everyone calls me stinky. It's very hard for me to have friends, Bobby says. 
I'm having trouble making friends too. I know how you feel. I need to go home now, but I'll come back to play. The next time I come, I will give three short meows so you will know that it's me. Buffy's first day out has not gone well. He is greeted by Margaret. Scrunching up her nose, she says, I know where you've been. She picks up Buffy by the scruff of his neck, plops him into hot bath. But after his bath, there's still a lingering smell of skunk. Margaret says, you cannot sleep inside the house tonight. Out you go. It's Buffy's first night outdoors. He shivers hearing the night noises. He hears a <coughs> Was someone calling out his mother's name? Buffy, trying to sound brave, meows. Who, who are you? I am Horace, a great horned owl. I know your mother. We both like to hunt at night. During the day, I've been watching you. I can see that you're having trouble making friends. I would like to help you. Buffy trembles because he's so nervous at the sight of the big imposing owl. But the promise of something to help him with his loneliness gives him the courage to come closer. Horace tells Buffy to look way up into the sky. Ooh, what do you see? He asks him. Uh, I see twinkling lights, answers Buffy, staring into the inky night sky. The lights are stars, and what you're seeing is called the Big Dipper. The Dipper is used by the angels. They dip it in the wishing well to find answers for their dreams. Now, make a wish. Buffy wishes with all his might that he will have many friends to play with and not be alone. Suddenly, Buffy feels very tired and he falls asleep. In the morning, Buffy opens his sleepy eyes and sees two rabbits with brown and gray fur, a large dark green frog, and a pale yellow insect sitting among the purple and pink flowers in the garden. Time who is the larger of the two rabbits, invites him to join their game of hop and jump. Time calls out to the smaller rabbit, Come on, Rosemary! Let's show Fiddlehead the frog and Praline the praying mantis how far we can jump! The two rabbits leap gracefully into the air. Fiddlehead and Praline both leap into the air, trying to catch up to the rabbits. Come on, Buffy! calls out Time. He tries to jump, but his short legs do not carry him far. All he can do is a short pounce before falling onto the ground. Horace sees Buffy struggling and decides to help. There's a swoosh, a flap of wings, and Buffy flies high up into the sky. Time and the others look up, and when they see Horace, they're scared. Then they hear Buffy's voice crying out, Look at me! I'm flying, and I'm going to win the race! Realizing that there's no danger, they begin to cheer, Hooray for Buffy, the flying kitten! Apache, a dappled gray horse, and Rodney the rooster are eager to hear about the race. They tell Buffy about the day they won the Feather Down Cup at the Feather Down Racetrack. Apache, closing his eyes, says, I remember the voice of the announcer calling the race. Apache is leading by nose with spirit of the wind close behind as they round the bend. Folks, this race will be too close to call. The crowd went wild and screamed when Rodney and I won the race. Puffing up his feathers, Rodney crows saying, Yes, we were the dynamic duel. Buffy likes the fast-paced action on the story. He asks Apache if he may pat him on the nose. He has never touched a champion before, and perhaps the pat would give him good luck. Of course you may. Apache loves the attention of his new fan. Apache's nose feels velvety to his touch. Buffy also likes to visit Billy and Kid, the two goats who live in the barn. They let Buffy tickle their beards. Buffy's real victory comes when he gets to hang out with the barn cats, Celine and one-ear Molly, the marmalade cats, 
and Mincemeat, the calico cat. This is big because barn cats think house cats are pampered and overfed. Thanks to Squeak's help, Buffy can climb up the barn beams. Chasing his toy mice has given him the agility and speed needed in chasing mice. Buffy does not have the heart to kill the mice, which are a source of food for the barn cats. Because of his unwillingness to take part in the kill, Buffy is left behind to play with the young gray kittens. Buffy now has friends to play with, but he becomes bored and restless. He wants to explore what lies beyond the barn. He crosses the barnyard. Charlotte, who is a Charlotte cow, is munching on some hay. She raises her head and asks, Where are you going? I am going to explore the lower fields, replies Buffy. There is a herd of Highland and Black Angus cattle down near the creek. Be careful of Dougal the bull. He can be short-tempered. Buffy finds the herd. Dougal doesn't look up. He is busy eating. His shaggy head with its big horns is deep in the tall grass. A mother cow lowers her head and gives Buffy a lick with her tongue. This is a sign of welcome. The mother cow says, Little kitten, you're far away from the barn. Do you know where you are going? I am going to explore the fields, says Buffy. Beware the creek. The sides of the creek are steep and the water is deep, warns the mother cow. Don't worry, I'll be fine, says Buffy. He's beginning to feel nervous, but not wanting to show his fear, he holds his head high as he walks away. The mother cow says, that foolish little kitten, his pride will get him into trouble. We should move closer to the creek in case he needs help. Aye, you got that right, Martha. That wee laddie is headed for trouble. Following the sound of water, Buffy reaches the creek. He finds Gil, a groundhog, arguing with Merlot, a muskrat, over real estate. Gil says, Living in a burrow high on the bank keeps me dry, and the scenic views of the fields are beautiful. Merlot replies, Having waterfront property is better. Closer access to food, and I can have a quick dip if I want to swim. Buffy has been listening and asks, What's a burrow? The two animals are startled. Engrossed in their debate, they had not noticed Buffy. Merlot says, A burrow is a big hole. Is it big enough to hold toys? asks Buffy. We don't need toys. We don't have offspring. We are bachelors. We are free to eat and sleep. We are living the dream. Say, who are you? I'm Buffy. I live in a big farmhouse. It has lots of room for toys, a tub filled with hot water, a soft bed, and lots of food. My garden is filled with lots of fresh flowers. Merlot looks across at Gil and whispers, Did you hear that, Gil? Clean water, flowers to eat, and a soft bed. Gil closes his eyes. He can picture himself lolling in the garden, eating daisies, and then retiring to a soft bed. Snapping out of his daydream, he says, Gee, Buffy, that sounds great. We would like to see your house. But first you should come and see our homes. We'll start with Merlot's. Buffy follows Merlot. Buffy, with his short legs, loses his balance. He tumbles into the creek and begins to flail around. Merlot dives into the water. He holds on to Buffy. He yells for help. There's a loud bellow. It's Martha. She stretches out her neck, lowers her head, grabs Buffy by his stubby tail, and lifts him onto the bank of the creek. Martha carefully carries him up to the barnyard gate. She drops him on the ground and gives a series of low bellows, saying, Please come. I need help. Buffy's mother hears the call and comes running. Hoot thanks the mother cow. She gently picks up Buffy by his nape and carries him through the cat door into the house. Margaret, 
makes a warm and cozy bed for Hoot and Buffy. Hoot stays awake all night, keeping watch over Buffy. She softly purrs in his ears, Please forgive me, Buffy. I should have spent more time with you. It's okay, Mom. You were right to let me try things on my own. It's not been easy. Maybe it's true that cats have nine lies. Buffy snuggles closer to his mother. No matter what, you will always be my mother. Hoot is so relieved to hear this and gives Buffy a big lick on the head. The two fall fast asleep. Margaret decides that Buffy will stay inside. His mother agrees and keeps him entertained by playing with him. Buffy enjoys his time with his mother, but he wants to be outside with his friends. Buffy's friends miss him. Squeak, says the time. It's just not the same without him. If he cannot come out, we should go in and visit him. We will have to wait for a time when his mistress is out of the house. The day finally comes when Margaret takes Buffy's mother to the vet to have her teeth cleaned. As soon as the car leaves, the snipe gives the all clear sign. In comes Squeak and all of Buffy's friends. Buffy's happy to see his friends. The cows are too big to come inside, so they look inside through the window and swish their tails. The party's crazy. The Blue Jays and Squeak are in the bathroom. Squeak sees a toilet and thinks that it is a bird bath. He slips inside the toilet. One of the Blue Jays by accident flushes the toilet, and another one grabs Squeak's tail just in time before he gets flushed away. Buffy chases them out of the bathroom. It starts to rain outside, and more animals and birds come into the house. The house looks like Noah's Ark. In the living room, there's Time, who is asking Rodney about his days at the racetrack. Merlot and Gil are standing in a corner, still arguing about real estate. A black squirrel is bouncing like an acrobat on top of the bookcase. One of the gray kittens discovers it, the TV remote control. Click! Today on Wild Animal World, the life of a mother lynx and her kittens. The little barn cats meow, saying, everyone please be quiet, but no one listens. This is all too much for Buffy. He panics and says to himself, what if my mistress and my mother come home? Boy, I would be in trouble. Just when he thinks things cannot get worse, he sees Stinky. Hello, Stinky. When did you come? Merlo hears Stinky's name. Merlo yells, Skank! Stinky's here. I have to leave. He makes a beeline for the cat door. He is quickly joined by the others, all trying to get out the door at the same time and away from Stinky. The front door opens. Margaret walks in carrying Hoot and her carrier. Stinky and Buffy run out in between her legs into the yard. Stinky runs as fast as his legs can carry him. Buffy catching his breath says, that was a close call. Praline missed the party and wants to know what has happened. Buffy replies, You would not believe me if I told you. The rain has stopped. Time says, Cheer up! There's a rainbow. Maybe that's a sign that everything will be fine. There is a moment of silence. And then Buffy says, Time, you were right. If I have friends, everything will work out just fine. Just the noise makes my skin crawl. I don't listen to her call.